right now. A person of interest still on the run at a local double murder case this morning. Why Bear County deputies are trying to find him. President Biden addressing the investigation into classified documents for the first time since a special counsel was appointed. I'm ABC's Jay O'Brien in Washington. What he had to say coming up. And let's look out there with live cam starting in the 50s. Still cool, but hoping for a little warm up later on today. One day closer to the weekend. Good morning, everybody. We did make it to Friday. It is the 20th of January. Thanks for joining us. Uh, the cold mornings and beautiful afternoons. That's kind of been the trend so far. Any rain in the extended forecast? Mike anticipated my question and is shaking his head. No, I was shaking my head to what Steph was saying. Oh, okay. Yes, you gotcha. jumped at. Uh, long range, yes. Yes. No. No more. No afternoon. beautiful day today. Uh, and no yesterday. Big today. Yeah, yesterday was absolutely <laughs> yeah. fantastic out there. But uh, what you see is what you get today. Cloud cover is keeping temperatures from getting as cold as what we could get. And uh, right now we're at 55 here in town. Balverde 54, some 40s in the hill country. Also, what's very important, too, is the fact that look at the dew point temperatures. They're about 20, 25 degrees lower than what the air temperature is. So this is going to come into play with the chance for a sprinkle or two because the air is so dry anything that does fall from the sky is probably just going to be evaporating we've got a chance for a sprinkle in the forecast but again most everything would be evaporating got a lot of cloud cover out there this morning this is acting like a blanket so it works in both directions keeps us from getting as cold but then keeps us from warming up that much kind of the opposite of what the clear skies dry air does when we have those 30 degree swings in temperature mountain cedars on the high side mold moderate both of those numbers well mountain cedar went up from the previous day mold did drop just a little bit from the uh, previous day's reading of course the update comes out later on this morning. We may drop down another couple of degrees, but again, got steady temperatures with this cloud cover out there, despite the fact that we don't have much of a breeze or and we have the cool air and then plenty of clouds throughout the day. 58 degrees again, a sprinkle. There may be something showing up on radar, but probably won't reach the ground now overnight early tomorrow. A little bit different situation got overall. Well, a lot of clouds tomorrow, but Sunday is going to be absolutely fantastic. Then we'll talk about those rain chances coming in here for next week. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, a man is found dead in an apartment in Converse overnight. It happened around 1130 last night at an apartment complex in the 4600 block of East Loop 1604, not far from I-10. Police say family members found the man shot on his couch. Right now, police say it's being investigated as a homicide. No gun was found at the scene. This morning, Bear County deputies still trying to find this man. They believe 25-year-old Deleon Taylor Griffin may know something about a double murder that we first told you about yesterday here on GMSA. And right now, he's only a person of interest in this case. Now, Bear County deputies say they found two bodies outside an apartment complex on Mansions Bluff. That's right off of Highway 90 west of Loop 1604. Investigators say they believe an argument over car keys led to the deaths of two men yesterday. Now, so far, one woman is under arrest. 42-year-old Sharice Wiley Taylor is facing a charge of capital murder. In your morning headlines, please say at least one person is injured after a shooting erupted at a southern Indiana Walmart late last night. Authorities say the situation is now secure. Police in Evansville, Indiana, near the Kentucky border, responded to the active shooter situation shortly before 10 p.m. Authorities say the suspect immediately started shooting at the officers once they entered the building and officers fired back. On Twitter, police said the threat was neutralized. Walmart released a statement that thanked the first responders on the scene and said the company is working with law enforcement. The suspect's identity has, has not yet been released. No word on a possible motive and no officers were hurt. And Boeing has been ordered to appear in a Texas federal court next week. The aerospace manufacturer is said to be arraigned on a fraud charge involving the certification of the 737 MAX aircraft. The case is connected to a 2019 crash where all 157 people on board were killed, leading to a 20-month grounding of that jet. Boeing entered into a deferred prosecution agreement with the federal government in 2021, but it did not involve family members of crash victims. They argued that the court, that to the court, that they should have been allowed to participate in the case, and a judge agreed. Now families of the victims or their attorneys may speak at the arraignment.
In Peru, thousands of protesters are pouring into the country's capital, Lima, and demanding the ousting of the country's president. In the past five years, Peru has had five presidents, and now, in the past month alone, more than 50 people have been killed all over the country during protests. Protesters say they want the Congress to be shut down and a new constitution be, be written. These latest incidents have marked Peru's worst political violence in more than two decades. This morning, President Joe Biden is addressing the classified documents found at his private home and an office for the first time since a special counsel was appointed to look into the case. As ABC's Jay O'Brien explains, it comes as House Republicans are ramping up their own investigations into those Biden documents. We found a handful of documents were failed, uh, were filed in the wrong place. For the first time since a special counsel was appointed to look into the classified documents found at his home and office, President Biden addressing the investigation while surveying storm damage in California. We have a serious problem here we're talking about. We're talking about what's going on and the American people don't quite understand why you don't ask me questions about that. I think you're going to find there's nothing there. I have no regrets. I'm following what the lawyers have told me they want me to do. It's exactly what we're doing. There's no there there. Thank you. The president's comments in line with what his White House is saying, promising to cooperate with newly appointed special counsel Robert Hur's investigation. But the administration also blasting Republican-led inquiries into the documents in Congress as politically motivated. Are you satisfied with the way your team is handling the documents? House Oversight Committee Chair James Comer now zeroing in on the Penn Biden Center, the office in Washington where the first pages of classified documents were discovered. The committee probing their donors and requesting the center's visitors logs. Republicans also vowing to look into the administration's transparency and why the initial discovery of classified documents in November was first made public in January after the midterm elections. And this is why there's such hypocrisy behind the Bidens once again, something big that comes forward prior to an election where they kind of keep it quiet, where the American public could actually have a say. Now the White House is hitting back, saying Republicans showed little interest in investigating the reams of classified documents seized by the FBI at former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago. That case has its own special counsel, which is proceeding with its investigation. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. 437, 55 degrees. Spurs and Clippers tonight. Keldon Johnson coming off his career high performance of 36 points. Find out how he feels about having to step up his game when other players are absent. If you have to leave early this morning, maybe in the next five or 10 minutes, here's how things are looking right now. 35 and Alamo on your Friday morning. And let's look out there with a live cam, a cold 50 degrees, or actually 55, but we're not gonna get as warm as we had yesterday afternoon. We'll be right back. San Antonio Spurs getting ready for the LA Clippers who come calling later tonight. It'll be interesting to see if Kawhi Leonard suits up after he was held out of the Jazz loss this week. He was not on the Clippers injury report last night. Kelvin Johnson coming off his career high with 36 points when the Spurs snapped their five game losing streak against the Brooklyn Nets. Since five of his six, 30 games have come when Vassell is out. Does he feel the need to pick up the slack when Devin is down? Not really. I feel like I just I just kind of do what my team need me to do, take what the defense is giving me. You know, um, you know. I, I think uh, for me and Dev, it'll be a lot of games in the future where we both have 30 or Dev have 30. But I, I don't really think there's no correlation. I feel like, um, you know, he, he can do it all. So just having him out there is definitely good. We can't wait to have him back. Tip off tonight between the Spurs and Clippers set for 7 o'clock at the AT&T Center. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. For the second straight day, safety J. Ron Kearse was limited in practice after he injured his knee in the third quarter of the Cowboys' victory over Tampa Bay. Defensive end Demarcus Lawrence is also nursing a nagging foot injury. Lots been made about the Cowboys being shortchanged on preparation time since they played on Monday Night Football. In fact, the 49ers will actually get two extra days of preparation when you consider they played Saturday afternoon against Seattle and are playing a home game negating a travel day. But here's an interesting stat. The Cowboys are 2-0 in games where they only have five days to get ready. And Mike McCarthy is 5-1 in his last six outings that included a short week following an appearance on Monday Night Football.
We've played in all the different combinations of, you know, six day week, seven, you know, seven day week, eight day week. So we, we, you know, this is nothing new for us. So we, we don't, we, we, we haven't had a schedule or won't have a schedule that we don't have experience in because you know so much of your preparation is about the flow and the specifics of you know get, getting things perfect and because you know perfect preparation is is attainable, and um, and that's that's just you know that's our approach weekly. Kickoff Sunday in Santa Clara, California will be at 530, but we start our coverage, live coverage from California starting today at 5 p.m. Look for that. Meanwhile, in Arlington, the San Antonio Brahmas continue their training camp. Their first year ever in the XFL is set to kick off in less than a month here in the Alamo City. The Brahmas will start their season Sunday, February 19th at 2 p.m. against the St. Louis Battle Hawks in the Alamo Dome, live right here on KSAT 12. Yeah, it should be fun. Yeah. Especially that Cowboys game, everybody's going to be watching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Late uh, Sunday afternoon, get perfect timing to kick back and watch some football. Yes, it is. Time now, 443 and 55 degrees for now. A small town secret hero up next, how a man helped his neighbors in need when they could not afford their medications. And welcome back. It's 446. An Alabama farmer secretly paid the pharmacy bills for those unable to pay, and it was only after his recent death that his generosity came to light. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a small town secret hero, Hody Childress, known for his humility and kindness. But what people didn't realize is for nearly a decade, he was also donating $100 a month to the local pharmacy to help neighbors in need when they couldn't afford their own medicine. He handed me a bill and it was folded up. I couldn't see what it was. He just said, the next time that happens, I want you to use this um, to help them out. And I want it to be anonymous. Brooke Walker, the owner and pharmacist at Geraldine Drugs, Actually, saw firsthand how Hody's generosity helped so many people, and he almost took his secret with him, only revealing it to his children shortly before he died. It wasn't surprising. There's more to Daddy than this one story. But Daddy done a lot for everybody. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Let's look out there with TransGuy looking over at I-37 at Houston where things are moving in I-37 at Southeast Military. I was looking earlier, there were flashing lights at St. Mary's, but of course we'll be checking in with that incident very soon. Yeah, so I know it's from construction, 281 uh, St. Mary's area on both sides down, down below. So just keep that in mind this morning. Usually wraps up by the time the morning commute gets going. Should be better for Friday. I was still thinking about that story about the, the guy that donated the local pharmacy. What a nice so gesture. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then his kids didn't even know to the very end. Mm-hmm. All right, weather. Let's, yes. We're trying not to talk about that today just because it's, yeah. it's what you see is what you get. I mean, it's cloudy out there. It's cool. It's not cold, but grab a jacket. It's that dampish chill with these temperatures in the 50s. Boy, look at that picture from yesterday. It was so, so pretty out there. Fantastic shot. I love that. Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. So I really don't see it too well in this shot, but we have lots of clouds in here. That's acting like a blanket on top of us. We do have a very dry air. We do have light wind, but we got the cloud cover, so that is preventing things from getting as cold as what they could. We got some 40s in the hill country, 55 in town. We may drop down, thinking a couple of more degrees here and there. And here's the very dry air. And like I was talking about off the top of the show, where these numbers, dew points, if you get you know dew points and temperatures neck and neck a lot of times you get some fog around here and you have a really high relative humidity but our relative humidity is very low and with these dew points so low the air is dry so anything that may fall in the form of a sprinkle or two it's going to evaporate more than likely before it reaches the ground so 52 degrees there's that 10 percent chance for a little sprinkly shower or two throughout the day. We're going to be up to 55 at noon and then top off only at 58 and again 10 percent chance across the board just for one or two of those little sprinkles out there. That's going to be the extent of it. So here's the uh, computer model. <clears throat> Excuse me. And again, they do indicate the chance for a few of those showers, but unlikely that anything reaches the ground. Then as we go into the overnight hours, as we get a little more humidity back in here, we're going to see a few more showers kind of scattered about the area and primarily off to the east and our eastern counties. And that'll be the case throughout the afternoon. Just one or two of them here and there around the area. And again, the reason for that is the fact that today these numbers stay very low, the dew points. But as we go into the overnight hours, they do tend to come up a little bit more.
more so the air is going to be a little more saturated, therefore a little more likely to have that rain reach the ground. But then notice the uh, real dry air coming on in here. Another front moves through then late tomorrow into Sunday. It's going to clear things out. I think we see Pretty good looking sunset, especially off to the west tomorrow evening. A lot of sunshine off to the west uh, tomorrow. And then Sunday is going to be spectacular. It's going to be pretty chilly on Sunday. And then we're going to, especially in the morning, then we have kind of the tail of uh, two weather systems or two two seasons almost next week. We start to warm up a little bit more Sunday just above normal 70 on Monday. The next front moves on through here and look what that does. Now today is actually the last day that is the coldest time historically of the year and normal temperatures are going to start to creep up a little bit here and there. But as of right now, the average high is 63 degrees and we're going to be below average going into next week for high temperatures and even low temperatures with the exception of a couple of days are definitely going to be on the, uh, the cooler side of things. So once again, the theme that we started talking about yesterday going into today is back to January. So forecast today, 55 at noon. That's it. A sprinkle or two, and most is not going to be reaching the ground. And then a high of only 58 degrees. So yeah, we will be five below normal later on today. Then tomorrow, slightly better shot at a couple of showers or two in the uh, in the morning in the first half of the day, starting off at 50. So not overly cold, but staying at 62 tomorrow. Sunshine in the afternoon, especially out to the west. Front moves through. Chilly Sunday morning. Nice warm up. Very warm Monday, then the next front moves on through here. And right now, that is a better chance for some rain early on Tuesday. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms here and there. And then we stay on the cooler side next week. More like January. Love it. Yeah, not too bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 451, 55 degrees. Actor Nicolas Cage has never starred in a Western until now. Up next, why he is so excited about his latest movie role in The Old Way. Lottery numbers this morning, pick three, seven, five, two, fireball two, daily four, five, nine, two, seven, fireball nine. Looking at cash five, one, four, eight, 17, 31, and your Texas two-step, one, six, 23, 27, bonus ball eight. Music World remembers David Crosby, plus Nicholas Cage talks about his first time starring in a Western film. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Many remembering legendary rocker David Crosby, a triple threat singer, songwriter, and guitarist, who died Thursday at the age of 81 after a long illness. His CSNY bandmate Graham Nash writing on Instagram that although people focused on the volatility in their relationship, what mattered to them most was the pure joy of the music they created together. Beach Boy Brian Wilson writes on Twitter that he's heartbroken, calling Crosby an unbelievable talent. David Crosby was 81. She took Colton Briggs, the coldest killer that I've ever met, and she turned him into a family man. Hard to believe, but Nicolas Cage has never starred in a Western until now. The Old Way features Cage as a ruthless killer, hell-bent on revenge, with his tween daughter in tow. And he tells us he's also surprised he's never saddled up until now. You're going to pay me to uh, dress the way I like to dress and wear a cowboy hat and homage some of my favorite movie stars? Well, hell yeah, I'm there. My, my stomach grumbles like anyone else's, you know. <laughs> the Old Way, out now in theaters and on video on demand. A big honor for Adam Sandler, the actor and comedian getting the Mark Twain prize for American humor. We're told some of the biggest names in comedy will be on hand for the ceremony March 19th. And happy birthday Questlove, the drummer, band leader and Oscar winning documentarian is 52 today, while the office star Rain Wilson is 57. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 456 and 55 degrees for now. As we mentioned during our 9 a.m. newscast yesterday when the story broke, actor Alec Baldwin will be charged with involuntary manslaughter in the fatal shooting of a cinematographer on a New Mexico movie set. Up next on GMSA this morning, we'll tell you when Baldwin will be issued a summons to appear in court. And a local trial setup continues for an Air Force major accused of killing his wife. How Defense says it plans to show why some pieces of evidence should be dismissed. Check in the roads with Transkai 281 at St. Mary's. Looking great out there. Stephen Cavazos is in the house. We'll talk to him coming up after the break. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. 
Making headlines this morning, charges against actor Alec Baldwin will soon be made official regarding the shooting death of a cinematographer. Why prosecutors could forego a grand jury and rely on a judge to determine if there is a probable cause in the case. Outside with Lycam this morning, 55 degrees, so dress accordingly. It's cool but not cold here in the city, but it, the best part about it is it is Friday. Made it to the end of the work week. It is January 20th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday. Yeah. Yes, cold, not cold uh, for me, though. I guess I have an old house and my house kind of captures the cold. And I was like, oh, my God, it's so cold this morning. And then I stepped out. I was like, OK, it, it's cold, but it's not too bad. Well, bravo coming to work, Steph, because I know Thanks. you probably wanted to stay under the covers this morning. <laughs> Definitely. All right, let's talk to Mike. Well, the nice thing about the weather, too, it's going to keep things simple today. You know how the past couple of days have been like, OK, jack in the morning, don't eat in the afternoon. <laughs> What you put on this morning and keep it all day long because temperatures aren't going to be moving really all that much at all. Uh, 55 right now will drop a few more degrees this morning. And notice that bottom number though, the dew points at 30. So we've got a big difference between the air temperature and the dew point temperature, only 30, 38% uh, relative humidity. That's going to come into play as far as any rain that we probably won't see. I'll explain that in just a second. 58 for a high temperatures today. So again, temperatures aren't going to be moving hardly at all. So you don't have to worry about do I need a jacket or not need a jacket. What you have on this morning, just go with that all day long. Big drop in the aquifer yesterday, down seven tenths of a foot. And allergens, mountain cedar went up, mold dropped down just a little bit. Of course, the update account comes out in just a couple of minutes. So plenty of clouds hanging around out there. And notice how, yeah, on this radar picture, there are a few showers down there along the coastal plain. However, with the air so dry down here at the surface, anything that may crop up and there are a couple of computer models want to get a sprinkle or two here and there, it's going to be evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. So even though there may be something showing up on radar like now or later on today, not going to really see much of anything cloudy cool this morning and then the cloud cover it, you know how when we have the clear skies and the dry air you get the huge swings in temperature well the opposite happens with this cloud cover it's the blanket so it holds the heat in overnight but then doesn't let any uh, sun heat us up today so we only stay in the upper 50s a sprinkle or two may make it down to the surface tomorrow slightly better chance for a couple of showers around here and then we're going to be clearing out late in the day and especially out to the west it'll be nice tomorrow evening and sunday looks fantastic nice uh, chilly start and then warm in the afternoon then next week we do have a warm start and uh, a couple of showers on tuesday a slightly better chance for some showers on tuesday and we are going to be cooler than for the latter half of the week all those details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority friday morning mr Fasos. hope you yep. have good news all day long well, same here, Mike. I am excited to be here, but I'm excited to tell you that the roads are quiet right now. Let's get a quick look at your Friday morning commute as we're ready to drive off into the weekend. 10 at Hildebrand, not a bad spot there. It's actually a great morning to go for a short cruise if you can. 10 at Hackberry, you can see the roads are pretty much empty right now, and you'll have them to yourself uh, for at least the next few minutes or so. Uh, but we're keeping a close eye on things. Obviously, road closures are definitely going to impact traffic, but as we get you to the map, no slowdowns to report just yet. But uh, it is very early in the morning, so that will change. But right now, again, a great day, a great morning to be out on the roadways if you have to head anywhere this early. 29 minutes right now if you plan on traveling into San Antonio from Pleasanton, so I'd say it's a pretty pleasant drive on 37 northbound. Uh, we're looking at 37, 30 minutes, pardon me, on Highway 90, traveling east from Castroville, and uh, your arrival from Lytle should be within about 17 minutes on I-35 northbound, so no need to rush. Again, uh, some quiet roadways is how we're starting our Friday morning. 281 there at St. Mary's, we did have some construction that looks like it cleared up just in time for this newscast, but we're going to keep a close eye on things and let you know of what road closures to be on the lookout for. That's coming up in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, DPS troopers had to send out a helicopter to find a driver that decided to run from Bear County deputies overnight. Happened just before 2 a.m. near the intersection of Panda Drive and Marlena on the northwest side near Loop 410. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says a deputy tried to pull the speeding driver over. That driver took off in a Dodge Charger. The deputy did not chase him. However, a driver later crashed into a parked vehicle and got out and tried to run away. However, the DPS chopper found him a few blocks away and he was eventually detained. BCSO says the man appeared to be intoxicated.
There's a pattern in the strategy lawyers are taking to defend Andre McDonald. The Air Force major is accused of killing his wife, and his trial hasn't started. However, for a second day, his legal team tried to get evidence thrown out yesterday. The defense team brought up multiple searches of the home, and in one case argued that investigators went into the McDonald's home without a warrant. There's no fact that would justify a conclusion of an ongoing emergency. We have a warrantless entry into the home. They also questioned whether Bear County deputies had the correct warrants. Andreen McDonald was first reported missing in 2019. Months later, her remains were found in North Bear County. Her mother told the court that she allowed deputies inside the home first, and prosecutors say deputies had probable cause to look a second time after finding a garage door was off its hinges. Now, today, the defense says it plans to show why other pieces of evidence should be dismissed. A judge will make the final call. The trial is set to begin on Monday. 505, a total of 54 construction projects are happening in San Antonio. And city leaders say 89% of them are considered to be on time. That being said, many construction impacted businesses say they are barely surviving. GMSA's Alyssa Cole joins us live from the North St. Mary Strip, where construction has been ongoing for a while now. And Alyssa, what goes into the hiring and holding contractors accountable? Great questions, Mark and Stephanie. Good morning. Well, we got a chance to speak with city leaders and they tell us when contractors miss their deadline, they have to pay for that. You know, they're fined for each day it goes over and those fines depend on the size of the project and the location. But what about mistakes? Well, the city says the cost behind those mistakes and additional time needed to fix them comes at the expense of that contractor company. We sat down with assistant city manager Rod Sanchez. He says when it comes to the hiring process, contractors have to check off on two things first. That first thing, they need to be able to offer the lowest bid and have a clean background. That's the second part. They need a clean background. Now, keep in mind, the city can also award contractors multiple projects at the same time. And that's something business owners, well, they're not too happy about it, including the business owners here along the North St. Mary Strip. And for many of you wondering, what about the selection process that comes behind that? Well, city council is supposed to meet next week to review the responsible bidders ordinance. This will give the city an opportunity to review that process in the future when it comes to selecting uh, future contractors, if you will. Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Now to the case against actor Alec Baldwin facing manslaughter charges for the deadly shooting on the set of his movie Rust. As ABC's Andrew Denbert explains, legal analysts say if this case goes to trial, prosecutors face an uphill battle. The felony criminal charges prosecutors are pursuing against Alec Baldwin could result in the actor spending five years in prison if he's convicted. Alec Baldwin and the armorer here, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, have had the book thrown at them. The district attorney in New Mexico says Baldwin and the film's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, will each face two counts of involuntary manslaughter for the deadly shooting on the set of Rust. Baldwin's prop gun somehow fired a live bullet, killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins and wounding the movie's director. They were not doing the things that they should have been doing in order to have a safety conscious and, and certainly with guns, a gun conscious movie set. One of the involuntary manslaughter charges carries a penalty of anything from no jail time to 18 months. But prosecutors added what's called a firearm enhancement to the second charge. They've said that's one possible charge and another one that a jury could consider would be an involuntary manslaughter count which involves more than just negligence. Court documents show Gutierrez Reed and assistant director Dave Halls handled the gun before Baldwin. Investigators say Halls, who struck a plea deal, said cold gun on the set, meaning no live rounds were being used. In an interview with George Stephanopoulos, Baldwin insisted he did not pull the trigger. So you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. But an FBI report found the gun could not have fired without pulling the trigger. In a new statement, Baldwin's lawyer says Mr. Baldwin had no reason to believe there was a live bullet in the gun or anywhere on the movie set. A lawyer for Gutierrez-Reed called the investigation flawed. The district attorney says a magistrate judge will now determine if there's enough evidence to move toward a trial. Authorities say six live rounds were found on the set and they have not determined how they got there. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 509, 55 degrees. Instagram is adding new features like quiet mode. We're going to show you 
how that helps you manage what you see in your feed. And next, a local strip club gets the city's attention. What health inspectors uncovered inside the club's restaurant when we go behind the kitchen door. And let's look out there with a live cam starting at a cool 55 degrees. Go ahead and grab that jacket though, it's gonna be chilly. We'll be right back. Just about 5.13 in your Friday morning, dancing wasn't the only thing dirty inside a San Antonio gentleman's club. A health inspector said the whole place was filthy and in need of a deep cleaning. Tim Gerber uncovers their other violations and more as he takes us behind the kitchen door. D'Angelo's Italian Grill located inside Capiche Gentlemen's Club at the 4200 block of Sungate Street danced across the stage to a score of 81 on their most recent health inspection. The inspector noting the entire establishment was in need of a general deep cleaning. The floors and walls were dirty in the kitchen, equipment in the kitchen was also dirty with debris, and the ventilation hood system filters were covered in grease buildup. That's not all. Utensils and food containers stored as clean were dirty with debris. There were gnats in the bar area and the inside of the ice machine was dirty with black residue. Five of the violations were corrected during the inspection, but the business was also in need of a current permit. Pancho's Mexican restaurant in the 1000 block of Old Highway 90 earned an 83 on their December inspection. The inspector found a bucket of cut potatoes being stored on the ground below a hand sink where splash contamination could occur. Food stored in a refrigerator was uncovered under dirty food debris on wire racks. Dishes were being washed, but the water didn't have any sanitizer in it. The freezer wasn't cold enough. The reach and cooler shelves were coated with food debris and there was caked on grease on the sides of the grill and other kitchen equipment. Employee medications and even cologne were also found in the kitchen area near a food prep area. A reinspection was ordered and they were told to renew their expired food license. The Picnic Foods located in the 1200 block of South General McMullen improved upon its previous score of 72 when a health inspector visited in late November. She gave the store an 83. They still had to toss out all of the produce in the walk-in cooler that had mold on it. The ice machine had a red and black substance growing on the inside. There was no valid food manager and their food license had not been renewed. Beer cans, pickles and other food items were exposed to contamination from missing ceiling tiles. The fryers and grills were coated in an accumulation of grease and food debris and so were the kitchen floors. They also needed to remove duct tape from all of the freezers. A follow-up inspection was required. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. I imagine being a health inspector is head shaking at times. I would imagine as well. 515, 55 degrees. Up next, we're gonna show you Meta's new feature that lets you manage your Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger account settings in one place. team we got a big project coming up and it all starts with ordering promotional products i'm on it for imprint makes it easy to get the logo products you're looking for the latest in apparel drinkware bags high-tech items and more you can be certain of getting it right at fourimprint.com. come on out i'm on it for imprint for certain <laughs> This cough. <coughs> this will help. Vicks Vapor Rub? Vicks Vapor Rub's medicated vapors go straight to the source of your cough, so you can relieve your cough to breathe easier. Vicks Vapor Rub, fast acting cough relief. How did Kellogg's combine crunchy oak clusters with a touch of honey, plump, juicy raisins, and tasty fiber into one delicious cereal? It took a lot of brainstorming. Get it? Kellogg's Raisin Bran Crunch. Two scoops of delicious. And we are back at just about 519 on your Friday morning. Friday, Friday traffic can be tricky at times. Yeah, yeah, we have been off to a really nice start uh, for the most part, but unfortunately we're seeing some issues along 10 at Fresno. We're going to try to get a shot from TransGuy, but let's give you a quick look around town. Uh, but things are pretty quiet for, again, for the most part. There's 35 at Topper Wine. Uh, uh, keep in mind, we have a lot of construction that's still going to take place. More on that in just a sec. But let's get you to the map because, as I mentioned, we do have an issue along I 
I-10 westbound at Fresno Street. Now, I tried giving our friends at TransGuide a call to see if we can get a shot of the conditions out there, but just be on the lookout. We'll work to get that information for you, but it doesn't look like it's really causing any issues for traffic traveling again in those westbound lanes of I-10. So just be on the lookout for those first responders. We'll get you updated on that in just uh, the next few moments or so. But wide look at the map just shows a lot of green out there. But as I mentioned, a lot of construction is still taking place. We know that northeast expansion project is well underway. So if you plan on traveling up 35, be on the lookout for some of the road work that's current up until at least this portion Sunday, February 5th. This is long term, so we're going to see the work take place 24 7. We'll see that we'll see a left lane closure on I 35. Those south the southbound frontage road between Pat Booker Road and Topper Wine Road. But back here on Transguide, 10 at Hildebrand uh, doesn't look too bad. But again, we're going to monitor that crash along I 10 at Fresno and give you those updates a little later on, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. All right, yesterday and the past couple of afternoons have been absolutely spectacular. A few little high wispy clouds out there. Great shot down in Poteet. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Not going to be seeing any pictures like that uh, or taking any pictures like that today because we've got a lot of clouds out there this morning and we're going to keep those clouds all day long. Mid 40s hill country, mid 50s in and around town. Once again, it's not three below in Divine, unless somebody opened up the freezer down there or something. Uh, temperatures are going to stay pretty steady this morning. Maybe drop down a couple of degrees. That's why I've got it down to uh, 52. And then there's that 10% chance for a sprinkle. And this is a very qualified rain chance just because the air is so dry out there that anything that does show up on radar probably won't make it down to the surface because we've got, relatively speaking, very low humidity out there. And there's a big difference between the temperatures and the dew point temperatures. So as that the sprinkles fall into that drier air, it's just going to evaporate. Although there is that 10% chance one or two may make it down here to the surface. 58 degrees for a high temperature today. That's it. So it's going to be a little bit different, obviously, than what we've had the past couple of days, staying below normal by about five degrees. There's the rain chance showing up on some of the uh, computer models. Uh, one or two sprinkles out there. Again, most won't reach the ground, however, as the humidity comes back in slightly overnight and tomorrow. Then as the air gets a little more saturated, we'll have a chance for some of those showers to reach the ground. So a couple of them out there tomorrow morning and then uh, throughout the late morning, early afternoon hours, a few decent showers are are possible out there. Uh, not very likely though. And then things will start to clear out from west to east as we go into tomorrow night and Sunday. And that's going to set us up for an absolutely gorgeous day on Sunday. Here's all the clouds that are hanging around here right now. And yeah, there are a couple of showers being picked up on radar down there along the coast. There's another system. As you can see, this is spinning right here just to the east of Las Vegas. That's what's going to be sliding on in here and bringing the chance of rain overnight and tomorrow and then bringing that front on through here. And then in behind that, we do have another chance of rain and another front coming on through on Tuesday, and that's going to keep us on the cool side. We'll have a little bit of a warm up, but then the overall trend once again is to stay pretty much at January temperatures and even below that, as is the case today, 55 degrees today at noon, cloudy, a sprinkle or two, 58 for a high. That's it well below normal. And then, so like I said, tomorrow we will have clearing late in the day, 62 for high temperature, 66 on Sunday after a chilly start. Beautiful sunshine. Sunday is going to be a spectacular day. Monday going to warm up very quickly up to 70. Clouds increase. Another front moves through. Chance of rain early Tuesday. And then we stay on the chilly side the rest of next week. Oh, yeah, back down to lower 30s or mid, uh, mid upper 30s. Upper 30s mm -hmm. and some freezes in the hill country. It's looking like next week. A late. true January. Yep. You've been waiting for that. Ah, uh, yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. 523, 55 degrees. Up next, how Samsung's Galaxy Watch will make it easier to access video from Nest and Ring cameras. And let's take a look at your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, seven, five, two, Fireball two, Daily four, five, nine, two, seven, Fireball nine. Cash five, one, four, eight, seventeen, thirty one, Texas two step, one, six, twenty three. 27 bonus ball 8. In today's Tech Bytes, Instagram is rolling out new features. The platform is adding a quiet mode. It's like a do not disturb that blocks notifications and messages when activated. Instagram is also giving users more control over the content you see by giving them an option to tap not interested. 
Next, Meta's new account center. It lets users manage settings for their Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger accounts all in one place. All your accounts are not added by default. You're gonna have to do that manually. And you can remove any of them at any time. And coming soon to Samsung's Galaxy Watch, live stream video from Nest and Ring cameras. The watch update will also include the ability to control more devices like smart air purifiers, thermostats, and blinds. It's expected to debut and within a few weeks. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Time now, 527 and 55 degrees for now. The 50th annual March for Life taking place in Washington, D.C. today, ahead of what would have been the 50th anniversary of the Roe versus Wade ruling. Up next, what Vice President Kamala Harris is saying about the White House's commitment to abortion access. And eggflation continues at the grocery store, why some experts say it could be months before prices return to normal. The Dallas Zoo had someone intentionally damage one of their enclosures that led to an escape of an animal. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. We speak with the San Antonio Zoo about the importance of keeping their endangered animals safe and how they do so here at the zoo. This coming weekend would have been the 50th anniversary of the Roe v. Wade ruling just ahead a preview of Vice President Kamala Harris's speech to abortion advocates in Florida and what both sides are saying about that issue now. And let's look out there with a live cam. Go ahead and grab that jacket. 55 degrees, though. Not freezing, freezing, but still cold. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is January 20th. Yay. Happy <laughs> Friday. Good weather to go with that as well. Not the greatest. It's not going to win any beauty pageants today. Because we got, uh, well, I mean, a lot of clouds are going to be keeping just right. compared to the past. The forecast yells out France. <laughs> <laughs> He's referring to the Miss Universe. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. Look it up. Viral video. Anyway. And, <laughs> fr sorry. France! <laughs> there you go. That was good. Yeah. You know, if you didn't have a calendar, you could tell it's Friday from <laughs> uh, that little foreshot over there. So anyway, uh, yeah, we do have a lot of clouds hanging around here, and that's what's keeping us from getting as cold as what we could get this morning because we've got some really dry air, light wind, but got the cloud cover, so that's our, our blanket on top of us. 55 is the air temperature. The dew point temperature is at 30, so a huge difference between these two, which means the air is very, very dry, which means if we see any sprinkles showing up, and there is some in the forecast, it's probably not even going to reach the ground. 48 at Bernie stage, uh, mid 40s in parts of the hill country. Everybody else is in the mid 50s right now. Very consistent temperatures thanks to that cloud cover out there. Mountain cedar high, mold is moderate. Update account comes out in uh, just about a couple of hours or so. Temperatures. It's all said and done, really are not going to be moving that much, if at all. We'll get up to 58 later on today. Got the mention for a sprinkle in there. Again, most of it's not going to reach the ground. However, tomorrow morning and then throughout the early afternoon hours, we will have a few showers hanging around here. And the rest of the weekend looks fantastic. Details on that and another front down the road. And this one's going to keep us feeling like January. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. So on this Friday, What's going on on the roads? Well, uh, Mike, we mentioned that we do have this crash, unfortunately, at 10 at Fresno. I just spoke to our friends over at Trans Guy, but let's get a wider look. You can see that it's actually on the Axis Road. And uh, speaking to our friends over there, it doesn't seem to be impacting traffic on the main lanes, which is good news. But still, if you plan on exiting at Fresno or anywhere before that, you'll likely see these flashing lights. Now, it doesn't look like a serious crash uh, from this point, but we hope everyone's doing OK out there. Just remember to drive safe. It's, again, not impacting the majority of traffic on the main lanes, which is why we are not seeing a buildup right there reflected on our map uh, in the westbound lanes of 10. But uh, other than that, the morning has been off to a very quiet start as we get ready to drive off into the weekend. And if you plan on driving into San Antonio for many of these communities, let's check out those travel times. 28 minutes along I-10 westbound, still pretty green from Seguin. If you're traveling in this early, about 33 minutes. If you're heading in from Lavernia on 87 northbound and for our friends down in Floresville, looks like it'll be about 27 minutes before you can get to the downtown area. Back here on Transguide, uh, we'll get a closer look at this, but it does look actually now that we've seen some progress there along the Axis Road, so that crash may have already cleared out. We can see one of those tow trucks already leaving the scene, but uh, we'll hopefully we'll have a better update in the next few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say all signs point to murder and the death of a man on the far northeast side. They have been working on this case at the apartment where he was found with gunshot wounds near Loop 1604 and I-10. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, how did police find out about this? 
Well, I spoke to officers a little bit ago. They told me that they got called here by relatives of the victim. Now, apparently those family members had come here to the Arcadian Apartments to check on the victim, and they told police they found him that way. And that was around 2 o'clock this morning. Now, officers told me it looks like the man who was in his 20s or 30s was shot in his upper body. They say they did not find any weapons here, so they believe that someone else shot him. And at this time, though, they are not sure who that shooter was. And so this investigation is just beginning right now. However, police say this actually was the second time they visited this apartment complex overnight. Now, at some point before midnight, police say that they were called here for a report of, sh of gunshots, but they were sent to a different apartment. And at that time, they didn't find anything, but it was about two hours later when they did come here and they found that man dead. Again, this investigation still going on. Reporting live on the far northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Harlandale ISD teachers might be getting three-day weekends soon if the community agrees to change the workflow this upcoming school year. District sent out a survey to parents and teachers this week asking them to consider a four-day school week. District understands the child care might be an issue and is considering options for families as well. The survey proposes that teachers have Mondays off to reset and take care of family matters. The move is meant to retain teachers in a time when many of them are leaving the profession because they feel overworked. This is just one option that we're exploring. Um, we know also that teachers have a lot on their plates, um, a lot of mental health issues. That these past few years have been very difficult for, for them. The district is asking the community to take the survey in the next few weeks. Any decision would need to go to the board for approval and would not be effective until the next school year. The battle over abortion will be on full display again this week, and today anti-abortion voices will be heard in the nation's capital. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, on Sunday, abortion advocates will highlight what would have been the 50th anniversary of the Roe v. Wade decision. We will abolish abortion! The 50th annual March for Life is taking place in Washington, D.C. Friday. This marks the first time the anti-abortion rally has taken place since the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, which took away the constitutional right to abortion. Jeannie Mancini, the president of March for Life, said on its website, quote, This year will be a somber reminder of the millions of lives lost to abortion in the past 50 years, but also a celebration of how far we've come. However, not everyone has the same point of view. Catholic Ireland provides women with more rights on reproductive health care than do, do parts of America. It's just strange to talk about America going backwards instead of moving forwards. Sunday marks the 50th anniversary of the Roe versus Wade ruling, and Vice President Kamala Harris will deliver an address in Florida. According to a senior administration official, Harris will speak about the White House's commitment to abortion access and will make the case for national legislation to protect reproductive rights. In the meantime, sides remain split on the matter. What happens when these unwanted children are born? Who will take care of them? We need to have ideas that are forward facing that take ideas from both sides of the aisle because this issue isn't going away and affects women every single day. I'm John Lawrence reporting. A tragic accident at a Denny's restaurant in Kentucky. An elderly woman died. Two others were hurt when the restaurant's sign fell on a car. Look at this from the scene. This happened yesterday in Elizabethtown, south of Louisville. Witnesses said the wind blew the Denny sign from its post, causing it to crush a car in the parking lot. A 72-year-old woman in the car was taken to a Louisville hospital in critical condition where she later died. Two other people also in the car were injured and taken to a hospital. An investigation into this horrible incident is ongoing. The FAA is releasing a new explanation for the computer meltdown that grounded air traffic nationwide last week. Federal Aviation Administration officials are pointing the finger at unintentionally deleted computer files. Now, they say contract personnel accidentally deleted those files in the Notice to Air Missions, or NOTAM, database. Now, on the plus side, the FAA was relieved to find the cause was human error, not a cyber attack caused by someone with malicious intent. The agency says it has taken steps to make the NOTAM system more resilient. 
They made it to the moon and back, and now NASA is hoping these mannequins can share some secrets about space travel. Scientists now analyzing data from two female mannequins, as they're called, at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Both Helga and Zohar spent 25 days in space aboard the Artemis I Orion spacecraft equipped with radiation detectors. Scientists will use the information they collect to determine what level of radiation risk astronauts could have on future Artemis I and other missions. Interesting. Time now, 539 and 55 degrees for now. Well, millions of T-Mobile customers may have been impacted by a data breach. What T-Mobile is saying about the kind of information that was leaked. Up next, an uplifting story about a cancer survivor who lost her ovaries during the treatments, but now has two new precious reasons to never give up on being a parent. Outside with live cam, mid 50s here in town. Mike is talking rain chances for the weekend. That's coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. Time check just about 543. In 2022, there were nearly 2 million new cases of cancer in the U.S., according to the American Cancer Society. And treatments like chemotherapy can cause changes to fertility that can be temporary or permanent. This morning, CNN's Mandy Gaither has the story of a cancer survivor who lost her ovaries, but not her hope of having more children. In 2020, with a newborn at home, Shelly Batista headed back to her job. I was pumping more at work, and that's when I noticed a lump in my breast. At first, she thought it was a clogged milk duct. The biopsy revealed that wasn't the case. Despite having no family history, this new mother was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer and the BRCA1 mutation. What 34-year-old thinks, oh, I probably have breast cancer, so it was very... Very surreal, very shocking. Almost as devastating, the thought of getting through cancer and not being able to have more children in the future. So before chemotherapy, a double mastectomy, and the removal of her ovaries and fallopian tubes, Batista met with Dr. Kara Goldman. She knew that this chemotherapy would save her life, but would likely take her fertility. Eight healthy embryos were frozen. And one year after her cancer treatment, Batista was cleared for pregnancy. There's a tremendous misconception that you have to have ovaries in order to carry a pregnancy, but actually the uterus and the ovaries function quite separately from each other. There were two failed embryo transfers. Then they tried a third time. We didn't want to get our hopes up too high, right? Um, so when we got the phone call from Dr. Goldman, she called me herself. Um, we were very, very ecstatic. During the first ultrasound, another surprise. And she moved the Doppler a little bit, and then she was like, oh, look, there's two of them. Twin baby girls born two years to the day Batista had been declared cancer-free. Yes, I, I always wanted, you know, at least three kids, so this was amazing. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And time now is 545 and 55 degrees for now. Are you tired of those inflated egg prices at the grocery store? Well, up next, when economists say they expect the cost to go back down. Also check on your expectations at, uh, for traffic this morning. The Friday morning commute is now uh, getting ready to get going. You're watching GMSA. And welcome back. It's 547. In your morning consumer headlines, T-Mobile says a hacker stole the personal information of 37 million customers. The company just revealed the breach in a regulatory filing, but it happened back in November. T-Mobile says the bad actor took data that included users' names, addresses, emails, phone numbers, and dates of birth. But no social security numbers, credit card information, pins, or passwords were exposed. Okay, an update on the skyrocketing price of eggs. According to a food market data company, the average price for eggs is still about $4.33 a dozen. This time last year, it was about $1.33 a dozen. Experts from research from IRI say it could take several more months for production to return to normal. Experts say to avoid scrambling to find <laughs> eggs, avoid shopping on Sunday nights or Monday mornings since most stores restock overnight during the week. Avian flu has reportedly wiped out egg-producing hens, leading to this major supply squeeze. According to the USDA, about 60 million birds are gone because of the disease. So far, I actually heard it was more than that. Yeah, it probably lasts a little bit longer. Mm -hmm.
Time now, 549. Let's go ahead and check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Uh, no issues here, guys. 281 uh, at Sprucewood is off to a pretty quiet start, but let's get a quick look at the commute. Uh, as you get a look around town, 90 at Couples is probably going to get a little bit busier in the next few minutes or so, but uh, check out that shot. Traffic is moving in both those east and westbound lanes without any trouble, but uh, we are keeping a close eye on things on the roadways. Uh, just because it's quiet uh, doesn't mean that there still aren't going to be road closures that impact traffic. You see a lot of those scattered construction barrels in and around the Alamo City. As a reminder, here off Warsbach Parkway, we will see roadway improvements that will be current up until January uh, 31st. So this will take us to the end of the month. But remember, crews are out there from 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. That's when we will see alternating lane and ramp closures. That's going to be in both directions from Blanco Road to Thousand Oaks. But I am waiting for our friends over at TxDOT to send us an updated list of all the closures that are happening in and around the Alamo City. But just for now, head over to KSAT.com slash traffic for a full list of closures there, but back here in town, it's nice. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. Not too bad. For a Friday, yeah. I mean, honestly, this morning coming into work, played my Spotify uh, playlist and really just kind of took it slow out there. It was just a really nice drive. In a Friday yeah. mood. And yep. we'll take nice. Yeah. Yes, Thank we will. You. But we'll keep maybe the jacket all day. Yes, yeah. what you put on this morning is pretty much what you're going to be wearing all day long, just because, um, uh, yes, kind the, of hung up and uh, uh, the uh, yeah. was referring to the nocturnal <laughs> activity. T-shirt so. and shorts, if uh, possible, later? No? <laughs> nah, probably not. Uh, we're only looking at uh, upper 50s for high temperature later on, so pretty much temperatures aren't going to be moving uh, throughout the course of the day. I love this picture. This little pip, the little border collie enjoying a beautiful day, and the look is like, okay, throw it again, throw it again, it's right here. Border Collins are such amazing dogs. Look at those gorgeous blue eyes on that thing. Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. All right, so we've got, like I said, a lot of clouds hanging around here right now, and the humidity is still very low. In temperatures, a lot of times we get the clouds coming back in, the humidity follows it, but we have temperatures in the 40s and mid 50s around here. And then these dew point temperatures are still in the 30s. So dew points are still uh, 20, 25 degrees lower than the actual air temperature. So what that means is if and we see any sprinkles out there, we are going to be probably not seeing anything reach the ground. So if anything shows up on radar, it will evaporate before it ever hits the ground. Upstairs in the atmosphere, we do have some moisture up there. As you can see, the water vapor imagery, lots of moisture aloft in the atmosphere. So that's where these clouds are up here. We got moisture aloft, but it's that dry area between those clouds and down here to the surface. And that's why anything that falls more than likely is going to be evaporating. We may fluctuate a couple of degrees in the next few hours, and there's that 10% chance for a sprinkle or two if it indeed reaches the ground, 55 at noon, and then a high temperature today up to 58. So whole different story than the past couple of days, and for the first time, it seems like in forever, we're going to be 5 degrees below the normal high temperature today, which is 63. So here's the clouds we got hanging around here right now, and yeah, a couple of sprinkles down here along the, the coastal plain are being indicated on radar, but again, a lot of this is uh, more than likely evaporating before it reaches the ground. There's the big storm system. That's the one that pulled the front through here a couple of days ago. Now we've got another one, and you can see this nice uh, clock, counterclockwise rotation right there in Arizona, just to the east of Las Vegas. That's the low that's going to be sliding in our direction. Give us a slightly better chance for rain tomorrow during the day as we get a little more moisture here at the surface. And it's not going to be a great chance, though. That will pull another front through here, so we get another nice shot of cool, dry air coming in here on Sunday. Warm up again preceding the next low. This one's got a little more going for it, a little closer on top of us, so this is going to be a slightly better chance for a couple of showers around here. Uh, Tuesday in the first portion of the day, overnight Monday into Tuesday, even a thunderstorm or two. Then we clear out, and that one's also pulling down some uh, colder temperatures. So again, overall, we stay at January temperatures. And then some is the case is today. 55 at noon, cloudy, a couple of sprinkles here and there. 58 for a high temperature today. Again, five degrees below normal. One or two sprinkles may try to make it down here to the, uh, the surface. And then tomorrow, a couple of showers around the area. That'll be about the extent of it. Uh, you know, a few of them here and there are going to clear out, especially out to the west late in the day. And the front moves through. We're going to be much colder Sunday morning mid 60s, very warm Monday back up to 70, but the next front, which will bring us a chance for showers, thunderstorms, then pulls in colder air for next week. We're look, probably looking at some freezing readings in the hill country by the middle part of next week.
better chances of rain this time around. Uh, especially Tuesday, yes. Very good. Thanks, Mike. 554, 55 degrees. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, five, two, fireball two. Daily four, five, nine, two, seven, fireball nine. Cash five, one, four, eight, 17, 31. Texas two step, one, six, 23, 27. Bonus ball eight. Powerball for Saturday night, $473 million. Coming up right here on GMA, we are in the southeast tracking the record warmth, but that's moving out, and we're watching storms move across the country, including one that has been across the country and is now shoving snow into northeastern Maine and eastern Maine, up to a foot of snow in some locations, so we'll show you all of that. Also this morning, the sleepover debate. While millions of parents are using the hashtag no sleepover, while others are defending the childhood rite of passage, our parenting experts are sharing their advice on what to do and getting all all the right stuff and by that I mean the hottest boots for the winter season. We'll have all that and more coming up right here on GMA. Stay with us. And ahead the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, the Dallas Cowboys have a huge game coming up this weekend with the 49ers. We'll get you ready for the NFC divisional round of the playoffs. And just ahead we'll have an update after a man is found dead at an apartment in Converse overnight. Ahead this hour, San Antonio police left with questions after a man is found dead in his apartment. Why their investigation into the incident as a homicide just ahead? You'll soon notice some changes coming to your Instagram account. What you can expect just ahead. And let's look out there with live cam. Go ahead and plan on taking that jacket with you and you're probably going to keep it for most of the day. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Friday. It is January 20th. Want to let you know we've got a crew on the way to a pretty significant fire right now on the northeast side in the 13,000 block of Lookout Way, not too far off I-35. Inside 1604, we'll do our best to keep you updated. And for now, we're going to go ahead and check in with Mike to see how our day will shape up and our weekend. Well, today is going to be a lot different than the past couple of days. Not going to be anywhere near as nice looking. You know, we had those clear skies and the big swings in temperatures, really comfortable in the afternoon. Uh, this morning, we got a lot of clouds out there. It's cool. It's not cold. We have temperatures right now in the mid 50s, 40s in parts of the hill country, really consistent numbers as of right now. The other thing to take note of is that the humidity, the dew points are really, really low compared to the air temperature. That number is what 25 degrees lower than what the air temperature is. So we got a very dry layer of air down here at the surface. There are a couple of showers showing up on radar down here right around uh, Beeville, well down to the southeast, but a lot of this is uh, probably evaporating before it ever reaches the ground because we've got that dry layer there. So there is the chance for a sprinkle in the forecast, but more than likely you're not going to be seeing it. Mountain cedars on the high side that went up from the previous day's reading. Mold did drop down just a little bit. Of course, the updated count comes out in about an hour, hour and a half. Temperatures, we may fluctuate a couple of degrees here and there in the next uh, few hours and then not really going to go anywhere with the thermometer 55 at noon and we'll top off at 58 later on today. A little cloudy skies and wind out of the northeast 10 to 15 miles per hour. A sprinkle or two, not a big deal. A little bit better chance for a few showers around here tomorrow. Then we're going to clear out in the afternoon. The rest of the weekend looks fantastic. Sunday is going to be a gorgeous day. Another front next week. Better rain chance and cooler temperatures. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, what's going on? Hey, well, Mike, we are keeping a very close eye on all our th cameras along 35 over on the northeast side, and that is because of that fire that Mark mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, we do have a crew headed to the scene, as he mentioned, but uh, as you can see here, 35 at Loop 1604. Spoke to our friends at Transguide to see if we can get maybe a shot of any of the conditions out there as far out as it is. Unfortunately, it doesn't look to be the case, at least right now, but you can see while we have our eyes on 35 things are moving without any trouble traffic is not being impacted so that's good news but we get you to the map and it's still the same story here lots of green on the screen but traffic is getting busier we are uh, morning rush is upon us so we will likely see a little bit more red that's going to build up there probably in the next half hour or so but I wouldn't be too concerned with it just yet especially if you're traveling into San Antonio this early in the morning 24 minutes that journey from Bernie on I-10 eastbound uh, won't be too bad for you but if you are traveling on 281 southbound heading 
heading in from Bolverde, you will see about a 27 minute drive time could get a little bit busier out there, and that's due to some of the road work that we tend to see 25 minutes on I 35 southbound. If you are traveling in from New Braunfels, but let's get it back here on trans guide again, keeping a very close eye on some of these cameras here, um, not spotting any flames or smoke just yet, but we do have a crew headed to the scene and we'll keep a close eye on the roadways along that route as well and keep you updated throughout the morning guys. Stephen, thank you. Happening now, a far northeast side apartment has become a crime scene, the place where a man was shot and killed overnight. San Antonio police have been investigating his death. The apartment complex is just outside the Converse City limits near Loop 1604 and I-10. Katrina Weber is there live. Katrina, like most complexes, those apartments are pretty close together. Did neighbors see or hear or see anything? Well, actually, police tell us that someone did hear gunshots here at the Arcadian Apartments a few hours before that man was found dead. Now, police say they came out here, they were called to a different apartment, went there, didn't find anything, and it was only later that they found the victim. Now, that was around 2 o'clock this morning. Police tell us that family members had come here to check on the victim and found him dead. They then called 911. Officers told me it appeared that the man suffered gunshot wounds in his upper body. They say they did not find any weapons inside the apartment, so they do believe that someone else shot him. And so far, they have not found that shooter. Now, the news has hit those relatives apparently very hard. We actually saw a woman walk up here, uh, talk to officers briefly, and then leave here sobbing. Uh, so police also left this area just about 15 or 20 minutes ago after wrapping their investigation. But as far as we know, they have not made any arrests. Reporting live on the far northeast side near Converse, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, the search is on for a missing woman last seen near Houston. 88-year-old Marilyn Jerome disappeared yesterday afternoon in the town of Spring. She's about 5 foot 8, has blue eyes, gray hair, and was last seen with a gray purse. Now she was also seen in a 2014 white Toyota Avalon with Texas license plate DGF 6002. If you know anything that could lead to her, you are asked to call the Harris County Sheriff's Office and that number is on your screen right now, 713-755-7427. And there is a pattern in the strategy lawyers are taking to defend Andre McDonald. The Air Force Major is accused of killing his wife in our area. The trial has not started yet. However, for a second day, his legal team tried to get evidence thrown out yesterday. The defense team brought up multiple searches of the home. In one case, arguing investigators went into McDonald's home without a search warrant. There's no fact that would justify a conclusion of an ongoing emergency. We have a warrantless entry into the home. They also question whether Bear County deputies have the correct warrants. Andre McDonald was first reported missing in 2019. Months later, her remains were found in North Bear County. Her mother told the court she allowed deputies inside the home first. Prosecutors say deputies had probable cause to look a second time after finding a garage door was off its hinges. Today, the defense plans to show why other pieces of evidence should be thrown out. A judge will make the final call. That trial is set to begin on Monday. Well, now to the case against actor Alec Baldwin facing manslaughter charges for the deadly shooting on the set of his movie, Rust. Legal analysts say if the case goes to trial, prosecutors face an uphill battle. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. The felony criminal charges prosecutors are pursuing against Alec Baldwin could result in the actor spending five years in prison if he's convicted. Alec Baldwin and the armorer here, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, have had the book thrown at them. The district attorney in New Mexico says Baldwin and the film's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, will each face two counts of involuntary manslaughter for the deadly shooting on the set of Rust. Baldwin's prop gun somehow fired a live bullet, killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins and wounding the movie's director. They were not doing the things that they should have been doing in order to have a safety conscious and, and certainly with guns, a gun conscious movie set. One of the involuntary manslaughter charges carries a penalty of anything from no jail time to 18 months. But prosecutors added what's called a firearm enhancement to the second charge. They've said that's one possible charge and another one that a jury could consider would be an involuntary manslaughter count which involves more than just negligence. 
Court documents show Gutierrez Reed and Assistant Director Dave Halls handled the gun before Baldwin. Investigators say Halls, who struck a plea deal, said cold gun on the set, meaning no live rounds were being used. In an interview with George Stephanopoulos, Baldwin insisted he did not pull the trigger. So you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. But an FBI report found the gun could not have fired without pulling the trigger. In a new statement, Baldwin's lawyer says Mr. Baldwin had no reason to believe there was a live bullet in the gun or anywhere on the movie set. A lawyer for Gutierrez Reed called the investigation flawed. The district attorney says a magistrate judge will now determine if there's enough evidence to move toward a trial. Authorities say six live rounds were found on the set and they have not determined how they got there. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Netflix is seeing a surge in subscribers. The company gained nearly 8 million subscribers in the fourth quarter. That time frame includes the debut of a plan with commercials for $7 a month. That is less than half the price of its most popular ad-free plan. Instagram is rolling out new features, including a quiet mode. It's like a do not disturb that blocks notifications and messages when activated. The platform is also allowing you to have more control over the content you see by giving you an option to tap not interested. Right now, 609, 55 degrees. And still to come on GMSA, the world has lost another rock and roll legend ahead in our next half hour. We're going to look back on the life and career of David Crosby. Construction projects you can see, be seen rather all around San Antonio. That means problems for local businesses. So what is the city doing to help? That's coming up after the break. And let's look out there with live cam starting at 55 degrees. Uh, expecting some rain, not today, but maybe later in the weekend or next week, we'll be talking to Mike about those chances.